Good evening, my fellow South Africans. You are gathered here today to preside over the champions. There will be no lockdown in terms of their victories because it's taken them about five years to get to where they are today. Maybe add one more. Make it six years. But it's all over. They are the MTNA champions, and they're here to share with us uh, their journey. Thank you so much for being with us here in the country and worldwide. Linda Mdambo, Dion Otto, good to see you guys. You yeah. strong? Strong, strong. Yeah, strong, yeah. You don't look like champions. Are you sure you guys <laughs> won something? Did yeah. you win something on the weekend? Yeah, we did. Huh? What we did, did you win? <laughs> eight million in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> eight million in eight the pocket. Million, eight million. What's the feeling? The feeling it's overwhelmed, Mr. Rob. Yeah. It's something big, especially for the team, for ourselves. And the team, the last time the team won the cup was six years ago. Yeah. And here we are today as champs. It's something, something overwhelmed. What does that mean, though, where you walk into a big team, you know? 1937, it says, that's when it was formed. Um, obviously not older than the team you played for before, which was Bidvest, which was 99 years old. But where they haven't won anything for six years, and you guys become part of the generation that claimed trophies back, how does that make you feel? Yeah, for me personally, uh, it's I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm just, I'm just feeling happy uh, that uh, they didn't make a mistake of, of signing me. Mm. They did make a, they did make the right investment, and I'm just paying, and, and I just need to, I'm just trying to pay, the, uh, pay them back uh, uh, by bringing trophies and try to, uh, try to, try to bring uh, uh, more uh, trophies in the cabinet of the team. And they definitely deserve that, don't they, uh, Linda, from your side? I mean, we'll talk about paying back that investment in just a second because not only has this man been scoring a goal, scored a goal of the weekend, but he's also been supplying all of the assists as far as Orlando Pirates is concerned. But, Linda, you're on the bench uh, this past weekend, but you lead in so many different ways. You know, your teammates speak so highly of you in terms of what you bring, the energy that you bring, uh, the singing that you lead. Because you're very gifted in terms of vocally and so on. But let's talk about your role, let's say, outside of being in the starting lineup. It's just as if you are playing, surely. Yeah. Uh, just thank you for having us, uh, Mr. Morawa. You know, one thing uh, people should always know is that Football is a team sport. Yeah, yeah. It's not golf. It's not tennis. Uh, we need one another. So uh, there's this one. Um, we we had a a mental coach last season, and one thing that he always emphasized was honking for one another. You know, he said uh, we should always honk for one another. Uh, those that are in front. Uh, he he made an example of birds. I don't know what kind of birds they are. He said those when they fly, they fly in a, in a certain pattern, and those in front take the wind. They take the force. But those ones at the back, they keep honking to tell them that they keep going, keep going, keep going. And once when they get tired, they come at the back of the line and the other ones take the lead. So, so that, that's what happens in the team. You know? uh, I, I believe I'm, I'm one person with positive energy. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 I'm sorry if I say this, but I'm, I'm selfless. You know? I like to see other people winning. Uh, that's, that's who I am. You know? The coach once said to me, he said, Figo, you know, when, I, when I got here, I've been looking at your games. You know, I play you as a number six. Yeah. And then you're on the right wing, you're on the left wing. You want to help everybody on the field. Why is that so? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want you to stay there. And I said, Coach, uh, I, I need to adapt to that because, you know, sometimes you cannot change who you are when you get on the field. Right. Yes, as much as it is work, but uh, your, your inner self comes out, you know. So I think I'm, I'm one person who likes to, to help. I like to see other people winning. Yeah. And because I know when my turn comes, uh, nobody can stop me. But where does that come from? Because that's a fascinating thing where you say you are selfless. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm on the bench, therefore I, to hell with this. I'm not even going to sing when we're coming out of the, the change room. Where do you think you get that from? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But I think that's how I was brought up. Yeah. Uh, being in the next door. I think I did an ad last time. They asked me, uh, where did I watch my first football game? Uh, and I told them, I watched it the next door in my neighbor's house. And they were all shocked. And I said, that's how we, we I, was, I was brought up. Uh, my neighbors had a TV. And when I got there, I was never asked if I'd ate. Uh, I would be given a plate of food. 
and even at school, my, my friends used to give me uh, the school shoes, you know, the old ones and all of that. So it, it just takes me back of uh, how, how I grew up. So mm -hmm. at this present moment, uh, at the level that I am, uh, I just reflect on, on my upbringing. And every time I, I, I see people, you know, uh, that need, you know, sometimes it's, it's not uh, monetary or material things that you can give to the next person. But your energy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, energy is something else. It never lies. You know, if we can have a, a yeah. fight, yeah. I can feel it the next morning with, with the energy. You can feel yeah. it when two people are, are not in, in, in good speaking terms. So I always say uh, energy never lies. You don't need to, to tell me lies and say, hey, I'm your biggest fan or something like that. Uh, your energy will speak to me. And I think that's also how I speak to people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, people appreciate the person that I am and... Yeah, man, that, that's me. I, I like to see, uh, especially Orlando Pirates, you know. It's a team that I, I grew up supporting. I mean, I'm opposite the Orlando Stadium, so wow. so I've never missed a game in Orlando. I used to also watch games yeah. in Ellis Park, you know. It takes me back to when I was growing up. So to see myself here and having won the MTN8, I'm, I'm just excited. Uh, mm. I'm over the moon, like I said earlier, Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's I'm, I'm living my dream and... I know, I, even after my playing days, I can look back and say, I was once at Orlando Pirates and this is what I brought to the When team. they broke that drought of six years, as we were saying with Dion Otto early on, and I, I see even went to the hairdresser to uh, dye your hair the <laughs> color of MTN uh, everywhere you go. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I love the creativity. I told you this man's got lots of energy uh, and he's brought it here to the studio. I mean, Dion, w when you have characters like um, Mr. Mdambo here, um, and you got so many different people. I mean, earlier, I mean, Makaring is also another one who's crazy, but also <laughs> gifted. Uh, ben Mutsuari maybe gives off a different level of energy as well. Tabang Munara, you would have played with him before, but he comes across. I was saying to him earlier that, you know, pirates were looking like uh, Vitz Light or something because you got so many, more than half of that team that started yeah. are people that are very familiar to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's guys we play, uh, uh, I've played with, and like the energy of Tambo, it's something else. This guy is he's, <laughs> he's just a beast. It's him and Zungo. Oh, okay. The moment these guys sing, I, you can you can feel man like no, I'm gonna die today. I'm wow. gonna die. It's like they touch you in the heart. They touch yeah. you. Uh, something. Uh, it's but have you learned like some of the songs that he sings? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which one? Uh, if he starts, then I'll yeah. <laughs> okay, then you must start. Yeah. No, man, bro. Started, Aye, no, bro. man. Oh, you can man. only see in the change room. No, man. this is a change room. No, man, no. Yeah. They're, Where's they're, the coach? There are millions of people no. watching. <laughs> coach, coach, coach is outside. He's just doing a warm-up. So start the song. Let him, <laughs> let him join so that we no. can feel. It must be a change room. We are given certain drinks that clear our throats. And oh, uh, that's true. Also. Yeah, 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 remember those yeah, drinks yeah, from yeah, USN? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. give us those drinks that's so we, we clear our throats. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, okay, we've, we've got stuff to th clear oh. your throats. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They don't work, don't yeah, work. Don't work. <laughs> but, but, but which one can you guys do, just as a quick collabo? Because I've, I've heard him say, I've been in the tunnel when <laughs> they're coming out of that change room. And I'm like right at the end. And you can hear that lead voice yeah. coming through. And Dion's not lying. It's just an, an opportunity to share that moment. I know that um, I'm, I'm catching him off guard, but that's live television. That's what we do. Just uh, 30 seconds, and yeah. No, let's save it for later. Because now we are excited, uh, excited <laughs> for having won, you know, yeah. 8 million in six years. Yeah. The team hasn't won anything. So we got to have first, you know, digest that. Yes, yeah. You see, even yeah. even uh, even the viewers are saying, Rob, please ask Linda uh, to do that dance of his for 15 <laughs> seconds in Yana. Please do. So you see, the requests are coming. <laughs> yeah? You are the person that you are, and people believe in who you are. But the game, boom, three minutes, Celtic are one nil up. What's going on? Because now Zinbao is not happy. He starts pacing around on the bench. He wants a, a dynamic change. He wants something to, uh, to because you, you got 90 minutes. Yeah, sure, you go to a penalty shootout, whatever. But what was happening on the bench at that time? You were closer. He was on the field. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I panicked, you know, uh, because uh, a few years ago, we were in the final against Baroque and the Telcom knockout. Yeah. And we were so confident we were going to win the, t the, the Telcom knockout. 
But yeah, when Celtics scored, uh, it, it was just nerves because I, I felt like uh, here it goes again, you know. They repetition. Be, repetition. They yeah. sadly were foods and yeah, because uh, in the MTN8, we, we haven't considered a goal. You know, because I remember even in the change room when before the boys went on the field, that yeah. I reminded them that guys, we've never conceded. We keep it clean and we make sure we score. You know, so when that happened, but you know, the fighting spirit has been there. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at our game against Cape Town City, where we always came from behind, and I think had we got maybe five minutes in that game, we could have won the game. You know, so the fighting spirit is there, and it, it, it really showed on the field. Mm -hmm. You know, especially at halftime, the coach said in the change room that they're lucky that it was halftime. Yeah. Had you got five minutes yeah. before halftime, we could have taken the lead. Mm, wow. so, so you could feel that. And yeah. he didn't speak much. Uh, we left the change room, we went on the field. Celtics found us warm-upping. Oh. So they found the guys ready. And uh, I think that in itself yeah. gave them a shock that, hey, these guys mean business. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it wasn't about the talk that was important. It was just about trying to act out now what you guys want yeah, because yeah. a coach can only do so much a lot is left in your hands Dion to try and change it what would you say as Linda was leading us into it's, it's half time the instruction is there you're out early what was going through your mind what was it to be accomplished now in terms of the players yeah like uh, uh, before we left uh, before we, uh, before we left uh, uh, the hotel yeah. we had a meeting the coach uh, did brief, uh, brief us and he told us that chance our job is done now it's you guys now. You go show us what you guys can do. And we, we just need to believe that we can do it. And we went to the game. We considered earlier in the, th mm. in the th uh, third minutes. And those are always the crucial. It's always crucial time. The first 10, 15 minutes is crucial. You have to be focused. But we considered. We went into the changing room. The coach just, he didn't talk much also. He just, he was just like, come on, guys. We can do this. Just go back in there. And yeah, just like uh, Linda said, the guys, uh, Celtic found us on the pitch already, mm. so we didn't have, uh, we didn't have a, a lot of uh, talk in the chain uh, in the changing room second half, no, because we were ready. We just wanted to go on that pitch and get the second goal, third goal, or something, yeah. And we got the second goal. H how do you describe your your game? Because whew, I just think your work rate is incredible. Uh, I think you got a, a massive, massive tank in you, but you also do so much tracking back to go collect, and then you do what you do best, either score or assist. Do we call you a striker? Do we call you, uh, how do you describe yourself and your position? He's <laughs> a beast. He's a beast. Yeah, <laughs> I know, he's a beast. I think hey, this guy <laughs> is crazy on the field though, hey? Uh, for me, I think I've, I was programmed very well, well uh, by, uh, by the coaches uh, who coach me. Mm. I've been coaches, uh, the coaches who coach me, it's top coaches, uh, Ceramis, uh, uh, Ceramis yeah. Yeah. yeah, Sean Bartlett, Coach Kevanan, John Maduka himself, I'm here now with uh, Zimbao, so I've picked up a lot through all these coaches, mm. yeah, Sean was a striker, Maduka was an all-rounder, so I've picked up a lot, Kevanan, it's, it's all about grind, you, uh, you, must, uh, you, must give, you must give your all, and yeah, for me, it's when I when I'm on the pitch, I just I, I just it's all about uh, uh, giving my all on that pitch. Yeah. Just give my all, yeah. But sir, I if remember I those. Uh, if I have to defend, I, I have to defend. And you attack. do that very yeah. very well. And and Linda is correct about you being a beast because that's where you find yourself. You you were in the opposition's um, box, and then all of a sudden there's a long ball maybe from Botswari, and it lands up new and you're like how do uh, how did this guy quickly get to the front you know so for me that that is that is incredible what's it been like though because the last conversation i had with you and you were saying that back home in namibia there are so many pirates fans and they are waiting on you expecting of you to bring back the glory i'm sure your phone was lighting up then after the game eh? <laughs> everyone from back home how are they <laughs> they are it's, it's i don't know you it's they are still uh, uh, celebrating. Yeah. Even my friends were calling me today, saying they are still celebrating. They can't believe a boy from Swakop Moon, wow. small uh, small uh, uh, town in, uh, in Namibia, at Orlando Pirates, scored a goal, won the MTN8. It's just something uh, great, especially for people back home. Yeah. Yeah, they are feeling very uh, good, uh, happy. 
Oh, well, if you're going home for <laughs> Christmas, it's going to be like a national hero coming back home then. Sarkop Munt. Hey? So. <laughs> I, I, what is the difficulty trying to pronounce that? Today I've got the courage because the mayor of Sarkop Munt is here with us today. Linda, I mean, talking about second half now, talking about the application, the mindset is important. Would you say your coach is as good a tactician as he is a mind reader, motivator, almost like a borderline psychologist? Yeah, uh, I think well, you, you, you can say that. Mm. But, uh, you know, as much as uh, he gets most of, most of the credit because he's the head coach, right. uh, even when things don't go right our way, uh, he's the one that takes, you know, the, all, all, all the problems. But what I, I'd like to say is that the technical team that we have, you know, uh, I think Coach Jay-Z is blessed, you know, to have uh, an assistant coach like Coach Fatu Davids, who's been a head coach. Uh, we've, we've got uh, Coach Yuri, goalkeeper coach from overseas. Yes. Uh, our fitness coach, Frank, he's also worked at PSG. So I think, uh, you know, that, that group, that technical team, I think uh, they complement one another so well. And mm. you, you, you can just see it, you know. Uh, we as players have our own table when we have, our, you know, lunch or dinner. And they have their own table. And you can just see laughter in them. So it's not always uh, tense in that. You, you can see that they get along. Yes. And I think that, that's and that means a lot to you guys as players who are observing to say, how are they? Oh, okay. So it's a happy family. Yeah. Um, I mean, I joked with Ben and Tabang earlier uh, on the radio show, and they, you know, they, I teased them about the choreography uh, that is there when you guys were scoring. I think you guys upped the game in this final. That was just some, you know, some crazy stuff that you're doing. But it's also a sign of how the team dynamic is, surely. Am I wrong in reading that? No, no, it, it is like that. I, I think... Uh, we, we, we feed energy from our leaders. Mm. You know, I think uh, when, when you're a father and you've got your kids, once yeah. you start panicking, you, you give the kids uh, the, wrong the wrong impression. Vibes, yeah. yeah, so they start panicking as well. So once we see our coaches happy and balanced, I know they, they get the pressure as well. They are human. But uh, whatever they portray to us uh, is what keeps us going as well. So there in itself, I think uh, we, we are blessed to have a technical team of, of, of their magnitude. Yeah. That goal. Describe in terms of importance, in terms of where it sits historically in your career so far? For me, uh, about the goal, it's, it's, it's going to be in the history books. It's, all, it's in the history it's already. books already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They already. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we needed that goal. Yeah, we needed, we needed a goal before uh, uh, f uh, going to, uh, going to uh, before going to halftime. And the way uh, uh, I got the ball, so it shows that I'd never die hard. Mm. If it was someone else, he could have just stood. But luckily, I played a one, two, a one, two to pull it. But uh, Vumbizai tried to clear it, but he cleared it in my path and just uh, just looped the ball over the keeper. So it shows that never uh, that die uh, die hard uh, uh, attitude. Yeah. You guys gave from Vizaya a hard time. Hey, Ronald was not having it easy on that day. I mean, obviously the frustration got the better of him. You know, in the end, when he had to pull on Lodge and then it became a penalty, he got the red card, he was sent off. Uh, and then it was difficult, as it was already for Celtic now, with the man short yeah. to try and find it. Was that almost like a deliberate thing to say, hassle this guy? No, for me... I will say our video analysis guys yeah. did the, did their job. Yeah. Because yeah, that was the main that focus was, was our in. focus was, was, was on from yes. yeah. yeah. Our focus was there. So credit to them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But what were they saying though? Because that's a fascinating uh, angle to talk about, where your video analysts have looked at a person who makes a difference. And I, I mean, I've seen Ronald what he does on the field. You can't just call him a, a defender yeah. because. W when he moves forward, he goes, you yeah. know, not just only for set pieces, but maybe start with you. What, what were they saying you should nail him on? Yeah, f okay, for me, since I've, I've, I've played with him at, yeah, Celtic, at Celtic, I knew him as, I knew him as a player, as a, he's, he's a player who plays left, left back, back yeah. so, but now he's converted to centre. Mm. So for him, his mindset is all about he wants to go. He always wants to go. Forward. Yeah, so he always forgets his central, uh, uh, his central uh, uh, position mm. so we were just targeting that space that's that's interesting though Linda because it, it, it worked in the end like yeah. I'm saying that 
his normal game as a left back. Yeah. You'd always see those forays. But clearly, John Matukasen's taking over when they were co-coaching with Siema as well. To redefine his role, that was seen as a weakness, which you guys capitalized on. Yeah, I think uh, on the field, I always tell people that uh, some people might say goalkeeping is easy. Yeah. Or uh, when you're a striker, you say being a defender is easy. Uh, those guys, they just sit there. But uh, the roles that uh, come with, with, with that position are, are, are too much. So for you to adjust to that, I think it, it, it's, it, it, it takes time. Mm -hmm. For him, since he's a left back, and our main focus was on him because in the past games, the analysis that we did was he always moves forward and he leaves space behind him. So our main focus was there, yeah. you know, because I think they, they also have quality defenders in, in Justice, uh, Shabalala, and in, in the other guys. So we thought that if they play Ufumbuzai, uh, that's one of the mm -hmm. uh, loopholes we, we, we might find. And like Otto said, uh, the game came through him. Yeah. Sure. I mean, lots of your comments that are coming through. And, and, and thanks again for switching on. I know that there's another important family uh, gathering that's happening on the other side. But all of you that are, are logged on and watching right now uh, have taken the time to be here with the champions as well. Uh, we do appreciate that. Um, Imbacus was saying that, Linda, you're such a selfless man indeed. Because I thought by now, Uti Uzobufunu Ughamba, you're somewhere. He says, thank you for your loyalty. I mean, that's coming from one of your fans. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank also, you. There's, always that, there's always that temptation to say, maybe if I'm not being utilized more here, then let me look for other options. But you've described earlier that it's not just about that, it's about the team dynamic, but I also see a happy player in yeah. front of me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm, uh, I, I am a happy, I'm happy at Pirates, you know. Uh, I, I'd love to play more. Uh, every footballer's dream. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm happy that I, I, I stuck with the team. You know, uh, th there's been questions, there's been you know advices from from people that hey, how about you move to a team where you'll get regular game time? Uh, but uh, I love everything that comes with the team. You know, uh, you play against, uh, you train against the best players uh, in, in the country, mm -hmm. uh, uh, national team players. You know, our, our team is is made up of uh, internationals. Uh, right now, we've got players. I, I was telling the other guys that. I think maybe part of us, you know, winning this was almost the whole squad had never won anything with Pirates. Mm -hmm. And now we get players in Utula Nislajoayo, Dion Hoto, uh, guys that have been used, Tabang Munare, used to winning. And they come here and they bring in that, you know. Tyson said it's, it's a good drug, it's a nice drug mm -hmm. to win. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I told him, I said, the feeling, uh, I told her every day. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, so with that, uh, I, I enjoy. and. You know, I, iron sharpens iron. You know, uh, some people might say, hey, it, the starting 11 at Pirates is amazing. Eh? But they don't know how we train, you know. We train at a high intensity and we, we, we give each other stiff competition. And that competition is crazy, though. <laughs> hey, much. guys, I mean, you look at a Chukamanja on the bench, Gabadinho Mango on the bench, uh, Marco on the bench, um, Jovu also. On the bench, Mabasa. And, and and already that's a that's a that's a starting lineup there, but these are these are guys who are hungry. There's a Linda that's part of these guys on the bench that's also like, yeah, I'm here, yeah. I'm sticking to this. Yeah, but what, what what's it like though? Is there any tension? Is there healthy competition? How would you describe it? No, the competition is healthy. A good team needs to have depth and good yeah. players. Once this one comes out, the other one will do the same what you did. You just add more value. And that's, that's what actually, yeah. uh, uh, like uh, the sub we made. Yeah. Lodge came in from the bench, scored, you see. So well, that's what we need. Well, created the penalty first. Yeah, <laughs> created, yeah, created the penalty. Yeah. Created the penalty. Yeah. Um, got the guy sent, sent off. off. Um, stood up, went to take the penalty himself, yeah. you know. And, and you got to say that a lot of things, whether it's, it's off the field, have been difficult for him as an individual, as Lodge. But the mindset, again, Linda, shows somebody who's like, yes, but firstly, I'm a footballer. Yeah. And he's a, there's a cup final. What, what a better way to silence whatever critics they are is in a cup final. Yeah, he, he knows he's, he's talented. Yeah. He knows the quality he brings to the team. And... 
It, it wasn't a fluke that Lodge was football of the season. Yeah. You know, uh, for him is just that he needs to find his feet, uh, make sure that he gives good performances, and like Hoto has said, uh, it, it deafening in the team. You know, if you look at our past games. Uh, guys that have been coming on from the bench have been scoring. making a difference, yeah, you know, scoring, scoring and making yeah. a difference. Yeah. Against Supersport, Zumo came on, he gave in an assist. Yeah. Mabasa scored the winning goal yeah. against uh, Nglov, who scored the other winning goal against Celtics, Celtics as well. Yeah. You know, I came on last from the bench against Kaiser Chiefs, yeah. I scored. So, yeah. so you look at that, and even the players that are always starting, I, I think uh, that in itself, it, it just rings at the back of their minds yeah. that uh, if I slip up, uh, if I don't take my job seriously, yeah. uh, I'm out because those guys are hungry. So that's how it is, and that's good competition. Yeah. You know, if you look at if Mang or top goal scorer is on the bench, yeah. and you find Lepasa who's working his socks off, uh, that tells you a different story. Yeah. Well, so I was going to say uh, again about Gabadinho Mango is that he has a guy who was your top goal scorer, a guy who was scoring crazy goals. I mean, I remember that so into Derby where uh, I don't know he was just on fire. He was scoring crazy angles outside of the box, um, but there's no automatic, hey, I was top goal scorer, so you must please start. Yeah. But I, again, I see him and I see his application. I don't see a guy with the negative energy. I don't see a guy who's saying, I, these ones are wasting my time. Took a bit of time as well with Makaringe as well to get into that groove. Yeah. And it looks like he's getting there now because he's got the kind of midfield that works for him. Yeah. I don't know if that is uh, getting it right, but we'll get a lot of your questions as well, so please send them through. And we'll also talk later on about the appointment at Amazulu of their brand new coach, Benny McCarthy, making his way back into South Africa and getting that important role. You've heard time and time again Sandy Lezungu stating that Amazulu need to finish in the top four at the end of the season. They have a project that they're working on. They're working on a centenary, I think it's 2032, where they want to be winning a league championship by that time. So that is the mandate. So Benny is back. Remember, he was in the cup final. He lost. He was in the cup final. He won uh, before he left uh, Cape Town City. Left them as an exciting unit, a, a, a team that was, you loved watching Cape Town City because they were that attacking team. So he's back. Let's see what kind of difference he'll make. He won't be on the bench, though. Uh, when they play against Golden Arrows of that Durban derby. So Alan Fries will uh, be in charge there. Benny will be sitting in the grandstand and watching that and hoping some of the players do uh, get to impress him as far as that game is concerned. And also will lead the charge as far as the tributes are concerned um, with the sad passing away of Mucheka Kamadisha. We'll take that towards the end of the show. It is part and parcel of our offering here today. But we're starting off, as we say, with the champions in studio, talking, living back, getting a, a bit of insight about their personalities, getting some insight as well about what makes them tick, but not forgetting that they are MTNA champions. Six long years of drought. Hey, Lucky Lekwati used to lift trophies every second time, lifting, lifting. That's why I always tease and say that th that's why he's still lifting weights today. He's fitter today <laughs> than he was as a football player because he was lifting trophies yeah. half the time. Yeah. Hey, yeah. That's what he was used to. So this Orlando Pirates team, we don't know if that's a beginning of what we saw when coach uh, Rudy Kroll was at Orlando Pirates recently. Uh, we got Joseph Zinbauer, highly committed. Uh, he talks about paying tribute to his son Fabio, who was involved in that horrific car accident in Germany. You remember that straight after the Soweto Derby, he left, went to Germany, went to see the son came back, was on the bench again. As players though, Linda, how, how was that playing out? Yes, there's a strong technical team at Orlando Pirates, but he's the head coach. You see him leave straight after an important game against Kaiser Chiefs. How was that like for the players? Yeah, uh, but uh, the team I think addressed us uh, when coach uh, left, that he's coming back, yeah. uh, but he won't be available for our Celtics game. And uh, coach Fatlu will be in charge. And like I said, you know, uh, we have a strong technical team, mm. and that didn't take away for anything. You know, we, we 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 have the same respect for Coach Fatlu as we have for Coach Jay Z, and that's what he did. And I, I'm excited that uh, as much as Coach Fatlu was head coach, we, we won the game. You know, mm. nothing came out bad, mm. and Coach Zenbao joined joined us for for the derby in uh, over the weekend. So yeah, we we have. Uh, Great respect for, for the two gentlemen, you know, and the rest of the technical squad. I don't know. I'm seeing all these messages. Half the people are asking me to ask you 
to describe your derby goal. What was that like? What was the feeling? Just talk us through that moment. No, Otto can explain first because he assisted the goal. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the opportunity, <laughs> passed it on. Not selfish. Uh, huh? You know I'm the king of assists. <laughs> so the king of assists. So yeah, so you were still making the run. So I said, no, let me just give you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's an important thing to do, though, because after time, you looking at the opportunity, Dion, and saying, I could actually finish this. I could take a chance. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, no, no, no. He's got a better chance. How quickly does that mind-to-foot coordination happen? for you to just release and say, let's make somebody else shine. Because in the, at the end of the day, it's about the team yeah. winning. Yeah, that's, yeah, like uh, Rob said, it's all about the team winning. It's, not a, it's, it's a team sport. Yeah. And if I'm not in a good position, I'll try to find my teammates. Mm. So that's what, I, that's what I do as a midfielder. I try to assist, and that's what, I, that's what I'm doing. And for the goal Linda scored against Christ Chiefs, I could have uh, taken on, on uh, 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 Car uh, Daniel Cardoso, but I thought, no, Linda is in a good position. Let me just give him because he's coming with speed. So let me just throw the ball in, into his path. And I gave him the ball, and the rest is history. Yeah. So he's passed it now? Yeah. And you've got the ball? What's on your mind? Take it from there. Uh, what was on my mind was uh, going to the corner flag. Uh, I, I love to dance, I love to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, I'm all about fun, fun, fun and, and, and just excitement. So, you know, when Otto had the ball, I saw space mm. and he rolled it and, and there was no way the Chiefs d defenders could catch me because they were playing an offside trap. Yeah. And I came, you know, and, and went through. And up there, you know, I, I acted as if I'm going far post mm -hmm. and he hit what I'm going. <laughs> 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 and I hit it in the near post, yeah. And then after that, uh, I, I, I just, Dance like I normally do, you know. Yeah, in my spare time I, I dance with my kids. Yeah. Yeah. So even in the change room, they know the guys know. Before every game, I come up with a celebration. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, so you lead the choreography. Yeah. yeah. So that that we saw on the weekend was courtesy of you. Yeah. My, you, know, you, must, you must check this guy's uh, Instagram page. Crazy. He says loves the family. That's the one thing, is a grounded man, is a family man, but also allows the kids to tap into the energy that he has in the same way that he allows the Pirates players as well to tap into his energy and ultimately their success and victory. That is an important cornerstone in your world, eh? Family? Yeah. Uh, they keep me going. Uh, I love my family, you know. My wife and kids, uh, I think they are my support, support structure. Uh, when, when things aren't going well on the field, uh, I know that at home uh, there's love in abundance. Uh, yeah. that, that's where uh, I, I'm mostly happy, you know, if I'm not happy on the field especially. But yeah, they keep me going every time I, 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 I get home. I've, I've got dogs. My dogs fight with my, fights with my son every time because once I, I, I enter the gate, the dogs want to come to me <laughs> and my son also. <laughs> so he sometimes kicks the dog and chases <laughs> them away. So yeah. Uh, I, I love them. I love them dearly. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and from your side again, Dian, I think it's a similar thing. Grounded person, very spiritual, but also very family orientated as well. Yeah, I'm a family man also, yeah. yeah. Tell that. me about that aspect of, of your life and what that means. Being somebody in the public eye, being somebody, uh, you know, like Linda says, that y you become so well loved by people and celebrated by people, but you go back to that that really humbles you, which is family. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, family comes first. And for me, uh, luckily, my family is here with me, my wife and my son. And just, yeah, like Linda said, it's almost precisely the same. Mm. Uh, whenever, after a game, when if you had a bad game, yeah. your family is always there to support, you know, mm. just to give you that, like, don't worry, it's just, just a game. Tomorrow it might be, it might be okay. And yeah, you keep on pushing and yeah, they, uh, the support comes from them, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's amazing. We, we talk about different uh, structures within a team. We talk about the different changes that come through. Now, there's that one guy, that tall guy that's just joined, Richard Afford. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about him because he, hey. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a figure and a half, but he's also a good human being, a good personality. What sort of dynamic has he brought to Pirates? I mean, uh, Ofori has brought, has brought presence, you yeah. know. 
especially in the sticks, mm -hmm. not taking anything away from Sunderland and Bonchani, yeah. good goalkeepers. Uh, but he, he's come in and he's also, you know, helped us. Uh, he's contributing towards the team's success. But apart from that, like I said, I think we, we have a, an exciting change room. Uh, uh, if, if I, I think people, uh, when we sometimes go live, when we at the stadium, you, you could see the viewers that, that log in. Uh, people yeah. are always waiting for us to, to be live, and especially in the change room. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a character, you know. Yeah. He sometimes comes with these Ghanaian music. And he yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... Uh, People might look at him, he, he looks like a, a serious, guy, serious no? guy, but yeah. a, a fun guy to be around with. You, you get the same as well, because yeah. uh, he was such an important figure for Maritzburg United and all the successes that they had, but everybody knew. That's why there was talks of him possibly going to Sundowns at some stage, uh, but then Orlando Pirates won that battle in the end. What, what do you learn from him? What do you take from him as a goalkeeper and as a, and as a person? No, for me, as a goalkeeper, he's vocal. Yeah, in the sticks, he's, so he's, he's, he's a big guy. And we know that a lot of teams are scared mm. uh, coming, uh, coming to a 40, like one-on-ones and aerial balls, because he's a big guy. He yeah, even at training. Even at training, he doesn't he take jokes. <laughs> he kills <laughs> he people. He tells you, yeah, yeah. I'm here, I'm here. I'm not here for jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll kill you if you can't be, I'll kill you. Because <laughs> yeah. what you do at training is what you're going to do in the game. So it starts at training. He tells you. Yeah. yeah. So definitely some... A, a missing piece at Pirates to complete the puzzle, generally. I mean, like we're saying, we're not we're not talking bad about the other goalkeepers yeah, that were there, yeah. but we're just talking about the the current physical presence of a guy like Ofori. That he's what your team needed. Yeah, and his confidence. You know, yeah. I, I remember the first day he came. Uh, for for other people, you know, they take time to adjust. He came on and he he had his six starts at yeah. Boots. And he went on the field, you know, tang the tang the the stats. Stats. And he said, "Today I want patience. The doctors don't have anybody there." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He That's said, true. The yeah, doctors yeah, don't have anybody yeah. there, so they, they have to work. Yeah. So <laughs> I need patience for the doctors. <laughs> That's and true. Yeah. And it was his first day. First day. His like, first hey, day. This guy. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with him? <laughs> don't kill us here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. But but when you get that though, because almost the intensity of the human being comes out from there, it's like don't let the doctors get bored, you know. Yeah. Get some patience there. Get them patching someone. Get them working on a broken limb. Wh I mean, wh what does that transfer to you as Dion, who has his own way of dealing with things? You know, for me, it shows that it uh, it's character, and uh, we are not here for for, uh, for for jokes. We are here we are here to work, you know. Yeah. It yeah. gives us that, that energy <laughs> and you have to push, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. I mean, I, I just love the fact that somebody who, who's new comes into the team <laughs> and brings out uh, all that madness and craziness as well. But here's, here's, here's another one in terms of leadership. You would know him because you played with him. What does Tyson bring here? Uh, he, I know there was that whole thing, yeah, okay, who's going to wear the armband? Who's going to be the captain? Would it be Happy Jelly? Would it be Tyson? when and how, and the coach was very clear that there would be three people who would be leaders yeah. in the team. So I think it was Nyoza, it's uh, Happy, Happy, and obviously Tyson. Tyson. Uh, but he is the captain. He's the guy that lifted the trophy and, and so on. Give me a, an, an insight about him as well, but also just being new to a team, but going straight into a leadership role. Yeah. Uh one, one, I think, you know, uh, after our photo shoot, when I first met Tyson, you know, I, I knew him before. Yes. He's, he's from Soweto, where I come from. So we had a chill after the photo shoot. He yeah. came to my place and we sat there and we chilled and he asked around there, uh, guys, and we told him, you know, and be yourself and yeah. uh, uh, come with whatever that the team has, has saw in you. Uh, bring it to us, you know, don't change for anything. And there's one thing I believe uh, he's a leader in his own ways. Mm. He's not vocal, mm. but his work, you know, uh, speaks for him. Uh, when he's on the field, uh, like over the weekend, he, he got a, a knock, I think, yeah, from a four. Yeah, from a keeper. Yeah, and, also and there was a Tabang yeah. on the stands. Tabang yes. said, yeah. if he's not standing up, he's seriously injured. That guy does not stay down. Mm. So he said, that guy is a soldier. And, and you could see it in him, you know. Uh, he was dizzy there. I mean, he took... Oh, yeah, you could as he was falling, he was already <laughs> yeah. he was already gone. But yeah. but you're saying that he, he's shown that mentality that he has always shown at Bidvest or at Bafana Bafana playing the same role is what you've seen of him now at Pirates. Yeah, I mean nothing has changed, and yeah. he knows what comes uh, 
uh, what what parents uh, pressure comes uh, yeah. playing for parents comes with you know yeah. I, playing for vets you know uh, as much as vets is a big team uh, but not with many fans you know at, yeah. uh, at parents you are always scrutinized you have a bad game the fans are <laughs> 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 uh, they're not best around uh, <laughs> but what, what's that been like and, uh, and i'm glad you're swinging it in that direction because i was going to ask you I, you had a cup final, you had Moses Mapida. You know what it's been like at Moses when it is a cup final because they stage a lot of the cup finals. And then you're walking there. Yeah, the chairs look like there's people there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they mess it with your mind. But there's just that, that energy, Dion, is not there. The vibe, what Linda talks about, a, about a well-supported team in Orlando Pirates. But it's, 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 it's a missing link. Is that a good or a bad thing? Because it could also be bad knowing that if the fans don't warm up to your play hey bob you know the story yeah like for me personally as a player i don't i don't i don't actually i don't actually listen too much outside yeah i listen to uh, i listen a lot inside yeah. what the coach wants and what the team wants so the things outside not that I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that type of player. So you, you, you like zero in, like you cut the noise I cut from outside. I cut everything outside. Yeah, just here at the game yeah. in the tunnel. Go do, go do what I do best, and that's it. So you're like in your own zone type in of thing. My own zone. Yeah. 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 And even in the when I, uh, when we played now the final, I was I was confident already that I'm gonna score, and I'm gonna lift up this. I, w I had that confidence already in me. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's incredible, though. But but Linda, when you do play your two derbies, and you guys do the manigini that you did. Manigini. Hi, Eve. And you understand it, and I'm glad you understand what I'm saying. And you guys do what you did in those two games. But there's no one to appreciate that in the grandstand. How does that sit? No one to appreciate you, your goal, your celebration. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, to be quite honest, we, we miss the fans. Yeah. Yeah, part of uh, football without fans is, is not the same. Yeah. yeah. And especially, especially for us, you know, everywhere we travel, uh, we get our fans. Uh, if this figure at Durban would get our fans at the airport in numbers, you know, singing and welcoming us in Durban. So I think we really miss that. Uh, and they keep us going. You know, sometimes uh, we are trailing, uh, so that yeah. so so you, yeah. you you can even feel the their presence yeah. Kanjal. so i think we, we really miss them but uh covid there's just nothing we can do and it's getting worse, though. That's why the, the presidents had to address the nation again. Uh, KZN overtaking Eastern Cape in terms of numbers. We were clocking 8,000, 8,000, and then there was 7,000 yesterday. I, I'm even scared to check today what numbers we're sitting on. But it is rising. It's escalating. And we keep saying, guys, we keep saying to you, wear that mask, social distance, sanitize, do all of those things, and avoid douche douche. The virus does not know that it's festive season. The virus does not know that it's time for Christmas. The virus is working every time. It's the invisible enemy that we keep talking about. It's invisible. And I don't know, guys, you, you, as football players, maybe you guys might help me here. But we also got to try and educate the people. We're getting into the festive season, and I'm glad that I've got top professionals here, is that when people are being asked to do those basic things, but they don't. They do the impossible things. They go partying, they go clubbing. You know, there's no space, there's loud music, which means that they're shouting, they're spitting around the place. How can we help get the message across, John? Because we don't want to be losing any more lives. Yeah, for me, like, like, the, presi like the president said, or, uh, what, like, uh, what he said already, yeah. it's, you know, social distance. Let's try to avoid uh, uh, crowd, uh, crowded areas, and cause the virus is serious. It is serious, and uh, we have to, we have to keep our, our mask on mm. and yeah, try to uh, try to uh, try to be as, uh, home as much as you can. Stay away from. You know what I think uh, oh. the problem was. I think uh, when we were first introduced to this virus was that it spreads faster during winter. 
mm. and in in summer. Oh yes. So so I, I think that you know people got that and people were, were waiting for summer. Mm -hmm. Said that uh, summer then and yeah. gradually we move from level five, you know, going down yeah. until level yeah. one. So that people thought I it can't live. So Ish. And, 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 and that's also the biggest lie, though, because if you looked at the numbers in the United States and the UK when they were in their summer, which is when it started, we were in our winter, the numbers were already skyrocketing there. So which means that the sun, the heat's got nothing to do with the virus. And again, I think the fact that people also were starting to think that it doesn't exist is because you don't see physically a person who is sick from corona. So Tina is about that, you know, you know, <laughs> so, so if you're not yeah. seeing that, then people are not believing it. But it is so quick and so sudden that you don't even have the time to see the person sick. And when they are sick and they admit it, you don't even have the opportunity to go into the war to see them. Even when they're being buried, it's these different protocols. So we're just taking this little two minutes to plead uh, to everybody. Let's improve our ways around something as simple as wearing a mask, etc. Because you had it first, guys, in your camp. I mean, I spoke to Ben earlier today, and he, he described how it was, because he was literally one of the first yeah. uh, footballers. footballers here yeah. to get, you know, COVID-19. And he, and he spoke about the fears that he had, uh, because he didn't know we weren't wise about the whole um, coronavirus then. H how did that filter down into the camp? I mean, did you guys feel the same energy? Were you were supportive of the player? Yeah, uh, it, it was shocking, you know. When we, when we heard about it, uh, we, we called Ben and spoke to him. We felt that yeah. maybe Ben is dying wherever he is. And you know, he told us that he's coping well. But uh, I think thanks to our team, you know, mm. with the doctors that they have, uh, they kept on giving us lessons and educating us about the virus and because we, we were under lockdown and we, we had zoom sessions you know mm. uh, with our families as well we'd go on zoom and then we'd also invite our families to come and hear what the doctors had to say so yeah as, uh, the more we got educated about it and how it spreads and mm. how you gotta take care of yourself i think that made things a bit easier and when we met as a team in the mm. bubble and we, we had ben with us you know uh, having been cured from from it then I think it, it, it was better oh. I mean it's amazing and, uh, and I'm glad all of this has happened we haven't forgotten though what we are going to be getting from you in terms of the song together with Dion Hotto um, so don't worry but also le let's thank everybody that's left the family meeting on the other side to join us here on the live broadcast uh, on Marawa moments uh, thank you so much indeed for coming through uh, we've had an open conversation it's a celebration as well of the MTN 8 the victory but it's also a, a great understanding <coughs> of these two individuals we see them play and we see them give off the best as athletes that they are but at times we don't really know their personalities we don't really know who and what they're all about. And I think somehow today that window of opportunity has opened uh, for us to tap into that. We've, we've enjoyed it. Um, we've even forgotten about the second segment that we were supposed to do. We, we're almost finishing a whole hour here with these guys and they were scared we might <laughs> do that. But they are loving it more than I am. Hey, Dion, what's happened to the shy guy? Gone. Finished. <laughs> He's talking, he's enjoying it. Linda, I was never going to have yeah. a problem with you <laughs> in terms of that. But, you know, six years drought, it's come to an end. It's about the journey forward now. Zinbauer has put his footprint on the land of pirates. We've seen the, the dominance, Dion, of Mamlodi Sundowns, as far as winning the league is concerned. Chiefs were close last season. Not sure what happened in that last game that they had. Gave it away. How soon do you think Pirates will start knocking on the door of wanting the big one of the league? Yeah, you know, Ro uh, Mr. Rob, the league, it's a marathon. Yeah. We take one game at a time. And for us, our main goal uh, uh, was, our, uh, was the MTN8. Because mm -hmm. it's the first trophy you play, you play for. So that's out of our way now, we have it. And now we are looking forward for SCAF. There's, uh, there's Nedben coming also. And the league, yeah, because the league is a marathon, so we'll just take, uh, we're going to take one game at a time mm. yeah, and see how far we can go. But we, we, wa we want it, yeah.
Everybody wants it, Linda. The, the bottom line is that it's always a true mark of a championship winning team. Match day one up until match day 30. It's about the three points and three points, limiting the total loss, getting a point here and there where you can. I'll ask the same question. How close do you think Pirates are to claiming that? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we, we are close to, to claiming the league, league trophy. Because yeah. uh, in the past seasons, we haven't done bad. You know, we've, we've come second uh, t in two seasons and yeah. then third just now. Uh, but apart from that is we need to take the positives from, from, from since the league has started. You know, we've, we've never lost a game. So, so that is a positive from us. Mm. You know, we just need to turn our draws now into wins mm -hmm. and you know, keep going. Like what I said, you know, take one game at a time. And you know, I think uh, for us to win the league, we need to win a Q innovation first. You know, win a Q1, Q2. We've lost the first one. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a, a chance for the second one. So maybe if we, we can take it in, in, in the, those segments, then we stand a, a good chance. chance you know? yeah. Make sure that we win this like mi mini tournaments, these six, seven games first, and then then we look at the big one. Be because you've got this team called Swallows. I mean, their coach was here last week. Uh, he won the coach of the of the month. But they've been doing well. They've been playing well. So this is a team that's going to be bringing back another derby, another Soweto derby, which you guys will be looking forward to. And and and, I don't want to waste the opportunity while I've got you guys here just to quickly off ramp uh, because we all worried we worried about what's happening we worried about who's going to be next that's the conversation that is going out there losing so many football players via car accidents losing such talent young talent via all of this that we're seeing and we do pay our respects and tribute and send our condolences to the Madisha family in terms of what happened over the weekend. We, I mean, our, our hearts are all broken. Truly, truly sad. Linda, let me start with you. Uh, maybe an opportunity to extend your condolences. Uh, yes, he plays for Sundowns, but at the end of the day, you guys are all one football family. You even make friends outside of just your Pirates family. Tell me your thoughts uh, on what's happened. Yeah, uh, I think first and foremost, condolences to the Madisha family, to Sundown's family, mm, to the football fraternity. Uh, you know, it came as a shock. Uh, we were discussing it, the, uh, I think today, during breakfast, I was with mm. the you for reset. We were supposed to be celebrating, you know, but our celebrations were cut short. Mm. Just the other week, it was Anilengonga. Mm. Now it's, it is Omadisha. I can just imagine how it can be a sundowns they're feeling right now. But even to us, I think it's a sad loss, not only to, to them, but even to South Africa at large. Mm. You know, I think uh, Madisha was a, was a talented defender and a young one at that. I think uh, even our national team has, has, has lost, you know, in him. So I, I just don't want to talk much into how he lost his life because I don't know. Yeah. But um, like, mm. yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's truly sad. And you talk about how the camp must be feeling. Um, before we went on air, we got the news and the information that uh, the, the league has denied Sundowns a postponement on their game. They asked TS Galaxy, do you mind if we postpone? TS Galaxy were like, no, great. We just we can't play on Wednesday because they've got to travel um, for their next away match. But the league has come back and they said, no, we're not offering you a postponement. So just those words that Linda spoke about, like, I wonder how the Sundowns camp must be feeling. They're feeling the way people feel when you lose two sons in such a short space of time. But now you've got to go and play. There have been precedents before. Whether it was Cecil Lolo, Senzo Meiwa, and, and, and the late, who were given and granted postponements, not just of one game, but the whole league program, the whole first division program was granted that postponement. But Sundowns, no, they're not getting it. So that, that for me is very puzzling. 
very, very puzzling. Let me offer you an opportunity to extend your condolences, Dion. I know that it's uh, also a player that you would have interacted with, that you would have known. Yeah, for me, our condolences to, to the Madisha family, the Sundance family. Their loss is their loss is our it, uh, their pain is our pain, you know, because mm. he was he was a he was a he was a soccer player just just like us, you know. It's just like he's playing in a different team. We we used to meet uh, meet a lot mm. in, the, in the dressing rooms, in the tunnel on the pitch. So for me, yeah, uh, it's sad, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do we change? How do we change things? Is, is there? Is there a way, guys, that you can uh, assist us so that we, because we worry. We worry about Dion, worry about Linda, we worry about any footballer. And we're not seeing this for the first time. Linda, how do we address it? If we had to speak openly, because we've got we, we to try and save lives. We've got to try and potentially save another similar situation from happening. It's already been too many. <laughs> I wish I knew how. Yeah. I, I wish I knew, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a difficult one. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I saw Jerome Damon. Because in trying to find solutions, people start to think in an attempt to save lives, you know. I think he posted something yesterday and he was talking about maybe inserting a clause in the players' contracts that if after a certain time they need to go somewhere, then the club must provide the transport or... or, or I, mean, I, I don't know, I mean, at the end of the day, you're a family man, you'd want to do family things. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to police that. I don't know, any suggestions, Dion, from your side? Because again, and I say this very humbly, is that it, yeah, we just can't have it carry on like this. Oh, Mr. Rov, I don't know how to put this, to be yeah. honest. I don't know. So equally difficult, eh? Yeah, it's difficult, yeah. 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 But like we say, the, our thoughts are with the family. Sundowns have released a statement as well. There's a lot of people were were worried about why aren't they putting out a statement. They haven't come out and confirmed anything. They have put the context there now to say they're waiting for the family. Over the weekend, there was no access to a pathologist. Because you got to understand that what they found as a family was a, a burnt out vehicle, including the driver. So there is no remains to be spoken of that they can truly say and identify and say that is our son. So tomorrow, at the laboratory, they will be hopefully getting some form of results that can lead to them certifying that it is who they think it was. So that is where we are. And once the family give that go ahead, then Sundowns can send out that statement to tell the people whatever it is that they need to tell the people. So the reason for the delay is just that, is that there has been no closure from the family. Because only now, when you come to matching DNA tests and the results, those would only be able to be available either by end of business tomorrow. And we wish the family well in terms of the healing process because it cannot be easy. Where you've got nothing to, to say, yes, we accept now. And that is why there has been no confirmation. There's been no condolences that have officially come through you know, from the club, because the family still believes that there is that, whether it's a fraction of an opportunity that it might not be. But that's why I'm saying that that is, that is where we are. But I, 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 I do thank everyone that has sent through their messages of condolences. Even now, I'm looking at the page, people are, people are in shock. People are emotional about it. And we all are. And we just wish everybody safe travels during the festive season. This is the last show for 2020. And I thank you for being part of this journey as far as Barrow Moments is concerned. Uh, wishing your families, wishing you safe travel wherever you're going to be. Practice exactly what we were trying to put together here with Linda and Dion. It's difficult, you know. 
It's all up to you. Try. Sometimes it's even not your fault. Sometimes it's the fault of somebody who's overtaking, oncoming traffic, whatever it is. Just try and be aware. We want to see you back here in the new year of 2021. Oh, 2020. It's been rough. To the champions. Amanda, what's up? Cool. I was saying, I'm going to fast and shake it. Once always. Once always. Thank you so much, Linda. Thanks so much, Dion. Uh, thank you guys for really. I mean, it's, it's been such a brilliant conversation. I, I, I lost count of the time, and I didn't even see that it's exactly an hour gone. Uh, but until we meet in 2021, guys, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Yep.